Hello class. In this video, we're going to be covering 7.4, which is compound interest. So for this section, we have actually four formulas that we'll be seeing in this particular section. This is how you find the future amount for a compounded interest problem. This is how you find the present value of a compounded interest problem. Now these are if it's compounded in times per year. This one though is if it's compounded continuously. So there's a difference between which formula you have to use. If they tell you it's compounded, and I think the values for M they give you is um, like annually, well, in that case, n would equal just one because it's only happening once per year. Semi-annually. Then we get um, quarterly, which means four times, it's four quarters and a dollar, right? Then we have monthly. There's 12 months in a year. Um, we have weekly. There are actually 52 weeks in a year. And then we have daily. And depending on which book you use, they use different values. This book, however, uses 360. Some books use 364 and some books use 365. But for you to get the problems right in using the textbook that we're in, you need to use 360 for in if it says daily. For compounded continuously, you won't see any of these words. You'll see the word continuously. So they'll say either compound, this one will say compounded annually, compounded monthly, compounded daily. And then you have to know which in value or how many times per year that means. Okay. So if we come over here, it says the principal, and that's the same instructions for two different problems. So I only wrote the instructions twice once. It says the principal represents an amount of money deposited in a savings account subject to compound interest at the given rate. A, find how much money will be there in the account after the given number of years. And B, find the interest earned. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to take, uh, we're trying to find the future value. So we're going to take A equal to P in this formula here. Now, because it does say compounded quarterly, that does mean that it's going to get compounded four times per year. So I plug in everybody, P9001 plus 8% over 4 times 4 times the time, which also happens to be 4. So these 4 are from the N, and then this 4 is from the time. Now, I do type that whole thing in the calculator. So 9000 parentheses 1 plus fraction, my rate is 8% over four parentheses, exponent four times four. So the whole thing is in there. And I'm gonna hit enter. You do have to round to the nearest cent. So this one is not gonna cause this to go up. So this is the uh, future value. Now, if I want to know the interest, you always take the amount afterward minus what you put in, and that gives you how much interest you paid. So I took this value minus the original 9,000, and that ended up with this amount of money in interest. Now for the second one, it's a little bit different here. So it's the same 9,000, but our rate is different, and we're compounding different, and our time is the same. So here, um, daily means, remember for this book, means 360 times per year. So you plug in the 9,000, one is one, R is 3%, N is 360, 360 again, times the T, which was four. So I'm gonna type all of that in my calculator. And I actually don't type everything. Um, I'm just gonna change this to a three, 360, 
And then over here, 360 times four. And I get this, but if I'm rounding to the nearest cent, the zero is not gonna change the two. So you do end up with 10, 147.42. And if you wanna know the interest that was earned, take that future amount minus the original amount, and that gives you the amount of interest that you paid over all that time. Now, number three says, find the accumulated value of an investment of $10,000 for three years at an interest rate of 7%. If the money is compounded semi-annually, compounded quarterly, compounded monthly, and compounded continuously. Round your answers to the nearest cent. So for semi-annually, it means N equals two. It also tells me that my investment is 10,000. So that's the P, that's what I'm starting with. My rate is 7% and my T is for three years, three years. So I plugged everybody into this formula. I typed 10,000 for P, one plus 7% over two and then two times three. When I typed all of that in the calculator, I did round to the nearest cent and I got 12292.55. I would suggest you try to do that in a calculator to make sure you can do it properly since you do know what the answer should be right here. So take this time to try to get that value. Um, for quarterly, the only thing that's going to change is the four. So what I like to do is I like to go back to the last thing that I typed in and then just change the N. So I would change up. Uh, this would originally have been two and two, and I would go in and change it to a four and a four. This I don't have to retype it. If you prefer to retype it, then by all means go for it, okay? Um, and so then when I typed in the calculator, I rounded to the nearest cent and I ended up with 12, 314.39. Then I did the same thing for monthly, same formula, and is now 12 and 12. Type all of that in and we rounded we get 1229.26. So then for 12329.26. For continuously though, it's a whole other formula. It's this formula because there's no N. It's not compounded a certain number of times. It's just always being compounded, okay? Um, and so when I plug it into this one, I get 10,000 for P, E, 7% times three. Now this one, I do need to show you how to put in the calculator. So first I would start off with plugging in my 10,000. Now to get the E, it's up here, but it's in green. So you see this LN, right above that, it says E with the power X. So I'm gonna hit second and the LN button and it pops up and it even puts the, the exponent there for me. So I'm just gonna type in 7% times three. And if you notice, it looks, exactly like it does on my paper, okay? I'm gonna hit enter. And if I round that to the nearest cent, it's 12336.78. Now, if you notice, here's when you only compounded four times or two times per year. Here's when you compounded four times per year. Here's when you compounded 12 times per year. And this is when you compound continuously. You're talking like milliseconds continuously compounding it. If you notice, it's not too, too far off. So yes, it does increase with the amount of times that you compound it per year, but then at some point you get a limit, okay? And it's not gonna increase any more than this, okay? So number four, there we go, I'm waiting for it to focus. <laughs> Number four says, suppose you have $12,000 to invest. Which of the two rates would yield the larger amount in four years? 12% compounded daily or 11.93% compounded continuously? So for both of them, the principal is 12,000 and the T is four. But for the first option, we have 12% and daily means 360 for N. 
So I plugged in the 12%, 360 for N, and the 4 for T. I have typed in all of that in the calculator, and I round it to the nearest cent. Then for this one, we're typing in 11.93% for R, and since it says continuously, we have to use this formula. So P went in there, rate in there times four, and I will do that one again in the calculator just for reference, since we've only done it once. Second, LN button, and then 11.93% times four. And if you round that to the nearest cent, this eight will cause that six to go up. And so there are your two values. If you notice, this one is higher than that one. So the same, the same, the same, but then nine is bigger than three. So the large amount comes from the 12% compounded daily scenario. Now let's move on to number five. So here it says, how much money should be deposited today in an account that earns 5% compounded semi-annually so that it will accumulate to $10,000 in three years? So we don't know how much to deposit, which means we don't know what P is. So what I did was the semi-annually equals means twice per year, right? The rate says 5%. I don't know what P is, so I put a question mark, but I do know what the amount needs to be after those three years, and that's 10,000. And then I do know that T is three years. So I plugged in everybody into, I plugged everybody into the wrong formula, to be honest with you. So I'm going to actually erase this. Now I did figure it out with algebra, but it's not necessarily to do that because they do give you an extra formula on your sheet. So notice here that they do give me a formula to figure out the principle. So what I should have done is I should have been using that formula. And so I'm gonna do it correctly. I, remember I teach the college algebra and when we do college algebra, we don't have this other formula. We just use the same formula and then solve the equation. But I know in this class, we don't go too far in depth on how to solve equations. Trust me that solving equations business can get way more complicated than the stuff that you guys have seen in here. Um, and so in the college algebra class, we do go over how to solve like every single uh, equation. And, um, Therefore, we can manipulate the old formula into what we need, okay? But here they give us a whole new formula, so why not use it, right? So plug in the 10,000, and then one plus 5% over N, which was two, and negative two times T, which was three. So I'm gonna put all of that in the calculator. One, two, three, parentheses, one plus, Fraction 5% over 2, close, raise to the negative 2 times 3. And if I round it, I get 8622.97. And so that is the principle that we would need. Okay. Now this is rounded to the nearest cent. If they happen to want you to round it to the nearest dollar, then it would actually be 8623 because the nine would make that go up, okay? So this is if they ask you to round it to the nearest cent, and this is if they ask you to round it to the nearest dollar. I erased it and I didn't pay attention to how I had rounded it. Um, moving on to number six. So number six says, um, you deposit $9,000 in an account that pays 5% interest compounded quarterly. Um, find the future value after one year. Then use the future value formula for simple interest to determine the effective annual yield, okay? So for the future value, we have that formula P1 plus R over N and T. So in this case, T was just one year, N was four because it said quarterly, rate was 5% and P was 9,000. I plugged all of that in rounded it to the nearest cent, and it was this amount. Now, it says use the future value formula for simple interest to determine the effective yield. 
So what they're saying is that they don't want you to use this formula. They want you to use the future value for simple interest formula. So don't use this one, use this one, okay? So I wrote that formula there. This is the simple interest formula to find the future value. So I plugged in the A, I plugged in the P, that's just one, R is unknown, and T is one year. So like before, I distributed my 9,000. So 9,000 times one is 9,000. 9,000 times R times one is 9,000 R. And then in order for me to solve this equation for R, I first have to get rid of the constants, the non-R terms, and move them over. So I minus 9,000 on both sides. I ended up with this number. Then I divided by 9,000 on both sides to get R completely by itself, and I ended up with this decimal. So 458.51 divided by 9,000, oops, too many zeros. And I get this decimal, which is what I was trying to express there. But then if I do second convert to percent and hit enter, it does tell me it's this percentage. But in the computer, it told me to round to the nearest tenth. So that nine will change that to 5.1%. So this means the effective annual yield is 5.1%. Now, had they not told me which formula to use, I would have used the annual yield formula, okay? That's what Y stands for, is the annual yield. So I would have used this formula. And if I had used the formula they gave me, R was 5%, N was 4 and I plugged all of this in the calculator, and I get the same exact value. So 1 plus fraction 5% over 4, parentheses, close, raised to the 4, get down, minus 1. I end up with that same decimal. If I convert it to a percentage and round it, I end up with the same 5.1%. I just had to follow the instructions that they gave me, okay? So later, if they ask me for the yield, but they don't tell me which formula to use, I'm going to be using the Y formula. So for number seven, it says the passbook savings account has a rate of 4%, find the effective annual yield, Round to the nearest tenth of a percent. If interested, if interest is compounded quarterly, not interested, interest. <laughs> okay, so monthly means that n is equal to 12. The percent is 4%. So that's all the bits of information we need for the yield formula. So it's 1 plus r over n to the power n minus 1. And when I typed all of that in the calculator, I got this decimal, and then I converted that decimal to percent and rounded it to the nearest tenth. So we'll show you that one more time. One plus um, fraction 4% over 12, raise it to the 12, get down minus one. And I have this, then I converted it to percent, and then I rounded that to the tenths position. So that's 4.1%. Now number eight says, determine the effective annual yield for each investment. You have $4,000 invested for 50 years at 14% compounded annually. Then you have 48,000 invested for 50 years at 7% compounded monthly. So I use the formula for finding the future value on both of these. I plugged in um, annually means once per year. So N is one. And for the second situation, it's monthly. So the N is 12. And both of them are 50 years and then they have their corresponding percentages. I typed all of this in the calculator and rounded to the nearest um, cent and I ended up with this value. Typed in all of this one to uh, rounded it to the nearest cent and ended up with this one. And it does ask me which one would earn more. So I figured out the difference from the larger one minus the smaller one. This is the difference. Um, and it appears like the option one was the greater, the one that earned the most, okay? So you will earn this much more going through the first investment than the second investment.
Okay, we have two more problems. Number 10 says, parents wish to have $120,000 available for a child's education. If the child is six year, is now six years old, how much money must be set aside at 8% compounded semi-annually to meet their financial goal when the child is 18? So the time, if the child is six now, then how many years have passed between him being six now and turning 18 in the future? That would be 18 minus six, which is 12 years. So this is a 12 year investment. Semi-annually means that it's going to be compounded two times per year. Our rate was 8%. Our um, future value, A, was 120,000. So I plugged it into, and actually I did it again, I plugged it into the wrong formula. And I don't want to erase all of it, so I'm just going to leave that bottom part. So I'm going to use this formula because this formula lets me find the investment. And I'm not going to plug in. I'm going to plug in the numbers. So A is 120,000. One plus R, which was 8% over N. Um, and then the negative M times T, which was 12 years. So if I type all of that in my calculator, one plus fraction 8% over two raised to the negative two times 12, that gives me 4681.4. I'm not even gonna round, I'm just gonna give you the value. Five, seven, six, nine, two. And it probably has more decimal. Now these directions did say round to the nearest dollar. So then that means P would be, that would go up. So four, six, one, eight, five. And that is the um, end of number 10. So last problem here. It says you invest $1,900 in an account paying 6.4% compounded daily. What is the account's effective yield? So I know that the investment is P, I know that the rate is 6.4%, and I know that it's compounded daily 360 degrees. Um, and since it's asking me for the annual yield, that means that T would equal one. But if you're using the annual yield formula, these bits are like extra information. The annual yield formula never calls for the investment amount and it never calls for um, the time. It just needs to know the rate and how often you're compounding it. And now I can tell you how much money you're gonna be earning on that account per year. So I just plugged in the rate and the N exactly where they belong, plugged it in, I got this decimal, I converted that decimal per to percent and I rounded it to the nearest hundred of a percent, which means two decimal places. And that is the end of this session and I will see you guys in the next video.